Welcome back to Colorist Factory. There is a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of dangerous oversimplification where LUTs are wildly thrown around in the name of easy, quick, cinematic shortcuts. But whether we can use it professionally or not, it's still a topic that never sees any spotlight. Now, if you are a newbie and don't know what LUTs are, then we've put a link in the description to help you understand everything there is to know about LUTs. Our aim here in this video is to quickly give you a glimpse of how LUTs are used in the industry and mimic the same process in Adobe Premiere Pro. So right off the bat, we have our footage in the timeline. Let's get started by creating an adjustment layer and drop it right here above our footage. Trim it accordingly. Let's drop a Lumetri panel real quick on our adjustment layer. Now we'll add a LUT. And as you can see, this is a daytime shot. And for that, we'll choose from our bundle, Daylight. Let's choose Hoth Light. Maybe crank down some intensity. Also, tone down on the saturation as well. Let's just call this LUT. Getting very creative with the names here. So now with this LUT in place, we can check its effect on our footage. And we can see that though the LUT is working perfectly, it kind of applies the same value to all the pixels, giving us this overly warm tint on the entire frame. We don't want that, and we can fix that. We're gonna drop another Lumetri panel onto our footage. And let's call this contrast and saturation. From the curves, we can pull down some brightness so we can have a better contrast here. From the creatives tab, let's crank up the saturation. 140 seems nice. Now, here is another important thing to work on. If you zoom it a little, you can see the DSLR footage captures all details. See the reflection of sweat on her face and body? The strong, specular highlights makes the shot look a bit amateur compared to a film-based footage. So we're gonna tone down the highlights to mimic that film look. For that, we'll drop another Lumetri panel on our footage. We can rename it as maybe Remove Video Look. Open RGB Curves. Let's mark the middle point first and pull down the top peak point of the line. And as we do that, we can see we are already toning down the highlights. Maybe just a little up from here. And let's check if I turn it off. Before, after. Much better. Now, let's focus on the sky. The impact of LUT has bled into the sky as well. It needs some fixing. Let's drop another Lumetri panel. Let's call this, you know what, never mind. Let it be. Open curves, hue versus saturation. We'll be picking the color of the sky for reference from the original footage, the pre-LUT footage. For that, let's just hide this video track. Select color picker. Pick the sky color, maybe from this spot. And there we have it, the points on the hue saturation line. We can increase the color range of this by making new points on the line. We don't want to leave a chunk of sky color unturned. Now, crank up the blue saturation. Before, after. We can see better when zoomed in. Before, after. Now, we need to do something about the skin as well need to get rid of this yellow tint here, and need to retain more of a natural blood flow skin color. For that, we can go to hue versus hue, pick up her skin color, and start playing with these points here. Punch up some reds. Actually, let's just pick up the color again from the sky, and then punch the blue towards cyanish color. Have a look. Before, after. The change is subtle, and that's how it should be, depending on the requirements.
before, after. Also, let's really give it a name. There are two more little adjustments we can do before our final step, although we can count this as optional, but can give another subtle edge to our film look. From the effects panel, let's drop a Gaussian blur. And first, let's zoom in a bit more. We need just a little blur, very subtle, to get rid of sharp edges captured by digital sensors. The vintage lenses used in early days, they sometimes cast some RGB aberration. You have probably seen some in the old tapes. We will mimic that here. Drop chromatic aberration from the effects menu, and you will instantly see this RGB color splits. Let's tone down the red aberration, and blues too. Maybe need a little more divergence in the reds. Let's move on to our second shot. We can just go ahead and copy paste effects in this shot. Let's extend the duration of the adjustment layer. It should be covering our second shot as well. We may want to tweak some contrast here. Let's check out the before after. Now our renaming last step, adding a film grain, which is absent from video shot on DSLRs. Tiny film grains, if applied in the right way, give a cohesive final finishing to the project. Otherwise, digital footage is sometimes just so sharp that it looks artificial. It looks unnatural. For this reason, we provide 4K high scan film grains with our LUT packs. For this shot, we're going to use 35 millimeter grain. Put it on top. Maybe scale it up a bit. And change the blend mode to hard light. We have another scene here. Let's have a look on how to grade this up in a similarly better way. As done before, we'll drop another adjustment layer on top of our footage. Drop a Lumetri panel on the adjustment layer. Now it's a night shot. For that, we're gonna choose a dusk LUT. glass LUT. And right from the beginning, we can see the kind of distraction caused by the background. It's almost just as lit as our subject. Let's tone down the saturation and call this panel LUT. We are going to follow a similar procedure, dropping another Lumetri panel on our main footage, renaming it as before. Contrast and saturation. Tweak some brightness from curves. and let's pump up the saturation. As mentioned before, the background is too much lit, especially that adjacent wall. We need the focus of light to be on our actor here. To fix this, drop another Lumetri panel. Let's call this Fix Video Look. Come on, this one's fine. Let's hit the elliptical mask, elongate it, and place it right on his face. check inverted. Tone down some exposure. Actually, no, let's just highlight first. Pull it down. We'll be needing to adjust the mask with his face orientation. Increase the feathering so that we can have a nice fall off. Now, check out the before after. Nice. 
Let's adjust the mask a little more so that it looks as if the light is coming on his face from above, naturally. Hit the play button for tracking. Nicely done. Now at last, we need to retain that skin color. Dropping another Lumetri panel, renaming it as Hues. Curves, RGB, Hue versus Hue. Let's turn off the adjustment layer so that we can pick our skin color. Turn adjustment back on. Punch up the reds. We are beginning to get that sweet blood flow skin color. Slightly too red. In hue versus saturation, let's lock the corresponding red hue and desaturate the reds. Checking out before, after. It's amazing how subtle changes can make a lot of difference. From his skin being weirdly yellow, we have retained the warm skin stone without compromising the effects of our applied LUT. Unfortunately, today LUTs are being subjected to wrong and poor marketing schemes, and we can't help but offer you a perspective on it. There is a lot to be taken into consideration before you set your mind on buying one. Make sure to read what they are actually offering. Are they offering any logical explanation on the understanding of their LUTs? Or how is it going to add value to your projects? Or how is it going to fit right into your existing grading pipeline? Remember, LUT is not where the grading ends, it's where it begins. Speaking of where it begins, <laughs> you may want to check out our time-based LUTs. It gets you started real fast, and since these are time-based algorithms, it dramatically saves you a ton of time. So that was it for this video. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Colorist Factory. Comment down below if you have any queries regarding this video. Turn on the bell icon if you haven't already. See you soon, and stay safe.